Hey guys, welcome back to Sports Crazies. Today we'll talk about the fattest NBA players ever. Let's head into it. Number 14, Sim Bueller. He's a big human being. He's so big. Size, strength, coordination, IQ. The goal for him is to get drafted. Sim Bueller is a giant in every sense of the word. At 7'5 and 360 pounds, he's one of the all-time biggest players in NBA history. This makes guys like Shaq look small in comparison. Born in Toronto and raised in Brampton, Bueller, who is of Indian descent, played ball at New Mexico State University and was picked up by the Sacramento Kings after the draft. He's currently playing in the D-League for the Toronto Raptors affiliate. Number 13, Charles Barkley. Hall of Famer Charles Barkley rivals Shaq when it comes to fat basketball legends. He's taken a lot of heat over the years for his weight. And in 2007, he was challenged to a race by the much older yet fitter Dick Bavera, who was in his late 60s at the time. Barkley ended up winning, but not by much. Thanks to Weight Watchers, Barkley, who was a 5-time All-Star and 1993 MVP, has lost a considerable amount of weight. Number 12, Eddie Curry. The Bulls had high hopes for Eddie Curry when they drafted him 4th overall straight out of high school. While he put together a few pretty good seasons, he didn't exactly live up to the expectations. One of the things that might have held him back was his weight. There's a reason they called him Baby Shaq, but unlike Shaq, Curry was unable to reach greatness, which prompted O'Neal to comment about the comparison by saying, I was a little big, but I was still putting up historical numbers. If he wants to get that next contract, he's going to have to go to the New York Athletic Club three times a day and just ride the bike. Number 11, Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis, who was listed at 6'9 and 289 pounds, earned the nickname The Big Baby because of his large, soft body and also because he's been known to whine. He's been big his entire life. In fact, when he was 9 years old, he was so big that he had to play with the older kids. Legend has it that when he was just a teenager, he got in a wrestling match with a 325-pound Shaquille O'Neal at an LSU camp and apparently lifted and body slammed him to the ground. Number 10, Ray Felton. At 6'1", Ray Felton is the shortest guy on this list. He's also the only point guard. To be fair, he only weighs roughly 200 pounds, so he's far from a beast. But he does look a little chunky for the position that he plays. A photo floated around the internet in 2012 showing Felton at a basketball camp with a noticeably protruding stomach. He's since trimmed down a bit, but it doesn't help this game all that much. He's averaging just 9.4 points per game this year with 3.4 assists as an occasional starter for the Mavericks. Number 9, Jahidi White. Jahidi White's career was plagued by injuries, and as a result, he only played 7 seasons in the NBA, finishing with 5.9 points per game total. He might not have been injured so often if he was in better shape. At 6'9", 290 pounds, he looked like some sort of monster on the court, which is probably why he was cast as a giant alien in the sci-fi channel TV movie Showdown at Area 51. Number 8, Stanley Roberts. According to some, Stanley Roberts had the potential to be one of the best centers in the game. Sports Illustrated compared him to the fellow LSU player Shaquille O'Neal. They also compared him to Fat Albert. But things didn't exactly work out for Roberts in the NBA, and a big reason for that was his poor conditioning. He was notorious for being out of shape, weighing as much as 345 pounds. He was often injured throughout his short career and was banned at one point for violating the league's drug policy. As Sports Illustrated notes, he smoked weed throughout his time in the NBA. Number 7, Michael Sweetney. Michael Sweetney was listed at 275 pounds during his playing days, but by the looks of it, he weighed well over 300. After being drafted 9th overall out of Georgetown University, where he averaged an impressive 18.2 points per game, Sweetney spent just 4 years in the NBA before being let go. His weight problems were often discussed in the media during his time in Chicago, and it undoubtedly led to his inability to make it at the pro level. He's currently playing ball at Uruguay, and footage of him would suggest that he's bigger than ever. Number 6, Greg Ostertag. Greg Ostertag is the poster boy for the big clumsy white basketball players. For the most part, the Utah Jazz put his size at 7'2 and 280 pounds to use on defense, as he was seen as a liability on offense, never managing to average double-digit points per game in a single season. Despite not being much of a player, he helped lead the Jazz to a winning season every year and became something of a fan favorite. After his NBA days came to an end, he had a short stint in the D-League for the Texas Legends, sporting a few extra pounds. Number 5, Bryant Reeves. Bryant Reeves kind of looks like Greg Ostertag's slightly heavier brother. Reeves was nicknamed Big Country because he grew up in a small town in Arkansas, but it's also a pretty good descriptor of his physical appearance. Brian, what's it like to be the big guy from a small town? Has it been fun for you? Oh yeah, it's, it's been real fun, you know, coming from a small town and coming up here and playing. It's been a lot of adjusting to do, but I think that I've handled that so far, so, you know, pretty well so far. At 7 feet, and somewhere around 300 pounds, he was an absolute galoot on the court. He played his entire career in Vancouver and had a few good seasons, but his weight problems and injuries brought a premature end to his career. 
Number 4. Jerome James Jerome James is perhaps the best remembered for its time in Seattle. Starting 80 games at center for the Seattle Supersonics during the 2004-2005 season, James has had an interesting career. Before joining the NBA, he toured with the Harlem Globetrotters, and after his first season, he played briefly in the Yugoslav Basketball League. Near the end of his career, he was traded to the Chicago Bulls, but he never played a game with the team. However, a photo of him in a Bulls uniform shows that he had gained a considerable amount of weight. Number 3. Robert Trailer. You don't get a nickname like Tractor Trailer for no reason. To say the least, Robert Tractor Trailer was a big man, weighing well over 300 pounds at one point. Like so many big players before him, Trailer's career was cut short by poor conditioning. He was cut by the New Jersey Nets before the 2005-2006 season because he failed the team's physical examination. Tragically, Trailer passed away at the age of 34 from a heart attack. He was playing pro ball in Puerto Rico at the time. Number 2. Zach Randolph Zach Randolph has had a long and successful career in the NBA, being named to two All-Star teams and recording an impressive 17 points per game through 15 seasons. All of this despite not being the most athletic looking guy. At roughly 260 pounds, he's far from the heaviest guy on this list. But you can tell just by looking at him that he's not in good shape. He's often sweating heavily and looks out of breath. But at least he has a good sense of humor about it. Back in 2015, he went on Jimmy Kimmel and read the following mean tweet. Jack Randolph is not so much in basketball shape. Rather, he is a basketball shape. Yes, I just called him fat. Hashtag sports. Number 1. Oliver Miller He's more famous for being fat than he is for having been a basketball player. Most of the players on this list only struggle with weight for a few years. But Miller was big, and not just strong big like Shaq, but flat out fat, for his entire career. Somehow, his weight didn't seem to hold him back very much, as he had a lengthy career in basketball that extended well after his last game in the NBA. He was listed at 315 pounds, but some say he got up to roughly 375 at one point, roughly 50 pounds heavier than Shaq but 4 inches shorter. This brings us to the end of our video, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.